Welcome to Living Faith Online with Pastor Connie McLean. your name, God. We worship you this morning, God. You are our way maker. Thank you, God.
is making a way out of no way. You are, you are, you are a way maker. Yes, God. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, God. Way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, we're going to lift that up this morning. You are a way maker, miracle worker, my God, that is who you are. You are never stops working your grace never stops working your power never stops working God as long as we're declaring and decreeing who you are how great you are how powerful you are how faithful you are God you are always working in our lives and we just thank you and we praise you God we thank you for all the times when it looked like you weren't listening when it looked like you weren't seeing God you were working your work in the spirit realm and you were moving people and you were navigating things and you were shifting things and moving things 
all on our behalf and in our favor. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for all those times when we doubted you. When, you, when we thought you didn't care. We thank you that you were still working. And God, we thank you so much that you are faithful. You are faithful, God. And we just thank you. We are so glad to be called your sons and your daughters of the Most High God. Father, we ask that you would bless this time that we have together. You said where two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be there in the midst. Oh, Father, be based on your word, we are glad that you're here in our midst. And it's because of you that we are here. And it's because of you that we have come. So we just thank you and we praise you. Father, I pray that you would just use me today. Let me decrease so that you can increase. We thank you for your word that is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to divide us every which way, even down to the secret parts. We just thank you and we praise you. We bless your name. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are. Glory to God. Well, somebody give the Lord a shout of praise and, and a clap offering. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. All right, I know y'all know how to scream through those masks. Don't act like you don't still scream at your husband and your kids. And at the TV, amen, hallelujah, thank you, praise and worship team, amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah, well, it's good to see those of you who are here, it doesn't look like 150 people, but I was never good at counting crowds. But I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you're here this week. Praise God. I do want to say before I jump into the message, and uh, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, October is considered the month of pastor appreciation. So I thank you so much for the cards and the gifts that you have sent me. And uh, I really appreciate you doing that. So thank you to all of you who have done that. I really appreciate it. I love hearing from you and, and reading your cards. And so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. All right. Thank you, Jesus. And I'll have some, some couple announcements at the end. Amen. Well, today I'm going to, uh, about three weeks ago, I had shared a message with you about, um, um, decreeing, or I'm sorry, um, declarations bring manifestations. How many of you remember that? I'm going to leave you alone with the, with the voting and voice thing, okay? <laughs> Take a time out, time out. All right. But I want to talk about um, declarations bringing manifestations. I don't know about you, but um, you know, all of us have been waiting and waiting for this thing to be over. Isn't that right? We've been waiting for COVID-19 to be over. We're waiting for the election to come and go. And, you know, we're just waiting for things to get back to normal. They're, they're, we're not going back to where we were. But I know one thing, I'm counting on it going back to better than it was. You know, when I was preparing um, this message, um, I could see the face of certain of you in the congregation, and I, it, it, it kind of made me tear up a little bit, but, you know, we need to decide that we're not going to wait. We're not going to wait. We, don't, we shouldn't be waiting for the world to change for us to put 
to believe God for his blessings. You know what I'm saying? We've been sitting and, 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 and stewing and brewing and waiting and sighing and fearing and all these types of negative things. But you know what? I'm tired of just waiting and just being a sitting duck. But I believe we should believe God that he's going to start doing some things now. As soon as we decide that we're going to believe God. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We've been just waiting for, you know, the governor, the governor just uh, re, re-enacted or renewed the, the, all the COVID-19 things that we have, right? So that means we're, we're stuck where we are as far as restrictions and moving around and things like that. And, um, and so, so now, you know, okay, now we got to wait another 30 days for things to break. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, some, some, some people don't have another 30 days. Some of you don't have another two weeks. We need to just believe God now. Somebody, somebody say, <laughs> don't wait for things to happen. Shout now. Believe God now. Amen. So uh, declarations bring manifestation. So God wants us to declare some things and to decree things that he has said. Um, you know, Psalm 103 and verse 20, it says that the angels, they hearken unto the voice of the word of God. And so we have to realize sometimes we get stagnant because we're waiting for angels to move on our word or to move on our uh, personal dreams or to move on our uh, bad confessions. But the angels are waiting for us to say what God says so that they can move and act on what God says. Do you hear what I'm saying? So we don't have to wait for anything. We can start, we need to be declaring and decreeing things right now. Now, I probably shared this with you before, and you all can put Psalm 2 2 in in the verses that I gave you. But the word declaration, it's the act of declaring It's something that is announced, avowed, or proclaimed. The word decree, it's an official order issued by a legal authority. God is our legal authority. His word is our legal authority. We say it all the time. If if God said it, then I can say it. If, If God decreed a thing, thank God he decreed a thing so that we can say it. Amen? We need alternatives to what is happening in our lives and in this world. So if you could put up Psalm um, 2, I hope I gave you that. It says, why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Now, you know, I'm not talking about the election today, but we have people in leadership, people in the country who want to break their bonds with God. Isn't that right? They want to break their bonds with God. They don't want God. And so, so they're, they're uh, show us the next verse. So it says, they said, let's break our, their bonds on us. Let's break their, their ties on us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. I should have given an IV. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Verse 6. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. He's talking about Jesus. Verse 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. And so this is talking about the son of God 
God called him and declared him the son of God. He said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Well, once God said that, once God declared that over him, over him once God declared that over Jesus, then Jesus then had a right to say that he was the son of God. Second Corinthians says that we are the sons and daughters of God. He says, I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and my daughters. Look at the person next to you say, hey, I'm looking at a son. I'm looking at a daughter of God. You know, I don't know about you, but that's a big deal to me. You know, you're, you're, you're not just your mommy and daddy's son. You're God's son. That's a higher position. That's a higher position and, and, and acknowledging, of course, we love our parents, we honor our parents, but that's not our highest position. Our highest position is the fact that we're a son and a daughter of the Most High God. Amen? And so once God declares a thing, then we can declare a thing. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 and verse 20, it says, For all the promises of God are in him, well, let me read in the NIV. It says, no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So every promise that God has given us, it's amen. It's not maybe. It's amen. It's yes and then we're just supposed to agree with God with the amen. Isn't that, isn't that right? So whatever God says about us, we just say amen. Now, promise is, 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 um, is a declaration or a statement of what somebody is going to do. And God has, has many, many scriptures, many, many verses where he has promised us things. He's promised us health. He's promised us prosperity. He's promised us peace. But we don't realize that a promise is God declaring what he will do or what he has done. And so it's, it's set. It's, it's a done deal. Amen? Um, Proverbs 21. So, so I had made the statement that um, the angels, according to Psalm 103 and verse 20, the angels... They hearken to the voice of the word of God. They don't hearken to our voices unless our voices are directly connected to the promises and the statement that God, statements that God has made. That's why we don't continue to confess what we see because God, God doesn't, he doesn't make us a promise of, of a, of a, of disaster. He doesn't make us a promise of failure. He doesn't make us a promise of losing our house. He doesn't make us a promise of no peace. No, he promises us the opposite. And so when we continue to confess what we see and what we have, then it, nothing can change. Isn't that right? And so we don't confess what we see. We confess what we believe. And I'm just going to read some uh, scriptures here. Proverbs 21 and 23, it says, He who so keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Isn't that something? Whoso keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Proverbs 18, 21, it says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 4, 23, it says, Keep guard, I wrote guard, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So it starts out in verse 20. It says, Son, attend unto my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them. What do we do when we find the word? We, we start to declare the word. We start to think the word. Whatever we think is what is going, going to eventually come out of our mouths. And so that's why it's important for us to renew our minds. Proverbs 23 and verse 7, it says, As a man thinks in his heart, 
so is he. Proverbs 15.2, it says, The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. Amen? And so we have to be careful. So, so we, are, we are sitting and waiting. Uh, you know, this is, we know this is the year of, of a spiritual focus and decreeing, uh, seeing and decreeing the word of the Lord. And, um, so, and we also found out that this is a new era where God's going to do a whole lot of re-stuff. He's going to be resetting. He's going to be rebuilding. He's going to be restoring. He's going to be recalibrating. He's going to be doing a lot of re's. Amen? And, and, and I believe, I believe, you know, a lot of things have happened that are horrible to people. They've lost their jobs, they've, they've lost their businesses, uh, they, they've lost their loved ones, but I still believe, you know, to me it's just like God that he would use not, and I mean it in the sense that how God, um, he, will, he will show himself strong even in a dire or a sad or um, a interrupted and, and um painful situation which which we we are experiencing right now we're we're at a great disadvantage as far as the things of the world is, are concerned but i believe that god is going i believe he's going to show himself strong that god is going to that god is going to cause in his church he's going to cause things to be better than they were before even even, you know, this is just me, even just to show the devil that you didn't win. That, see, see look, you, you, didn't, you didn't kill my kids. You didn't wipe them out. You didn't make them turn back from me. And, he's, and God's going to just raise us up in a way that he's never raised us up before as we maintain our faith, our confessions of faith, as we begin to declare and decree what the Lord has said unto me about his promises for everything that calls for a life of peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. That's God's purpose. And I believe God is going to use this time that he's going to, we, he's going to cause us to come out on top. But my point is today, let's not wait Let's get on top now, up here. Let's get on top right now, right here, and start to declare some things. You know, it would be just like God, even though businesses got shut down, it would be just like God to give you a business before all of this stuff is even over. Why do we have to wait? We keep waiting. We keep... We, you know, we keep putting things off. We got to wait another 30 days and wait another 30 days, all because we were in these things. We don't have to wait. What's this got to do with the promise of God coming to pass in your life? I'm telling you, it's the devil get, getting you to shut your mouth. In a decade of pay of the mouth. Like that's why I said, I know y'all can scream louder than you did when I said, let's give the Lord some praise. When you're at McDonald's, give me a whopper. I said a whopper. Supersize it. So we know how to talk through these things. Isn't that right? We don't let these things stop us from eating, getting our nails done, getting our eyelashes and eyebrows and what's men do? Go to the gym, work, get your muscles, right? No, it's not stopping us from any of that. It shouldn't stop us from seeing the promises of God come to pass in our lives. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> 
So I just wanted to encourage you to don't lose heart, don't faint, don't give up, don't draw back, don't become complacent, don't become complacent, don't settle for less. God wants to bust up in your house and provide for you like he's never provided for you before. In the midst of all this, I said, don't wait for COVID-19 to be over. Let's shout now. Let's declare now. Let's believe God now for the things that, that are in your heart that you desire, the things that you were desiring and wanting before all this stuff happened. Those things haven't gone away. You should still be believing God for those things. You should still be believing God for your house. You should still believe, be, believe in God for a new apartment, for a new husband, for a wife, for a new baby. We should be believe, still be believing God for all those things. We're not waiting. I'm tired of waiting for COVID-19 to be over. And I hope you will be too. Amen. I want to especially um, encourage those of you, I really feel in my heart or sense in my heart that, you know, there, there are those who, Psalm 37 and verse, verse 5, I believe it is, it says 25. It says, um, David said, he says, I've been young and I've been old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I want to talk to all of you who so are Social Security age or older. I want to encourage you that God still wants to meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I want to encourage you, don't be afraid that God's not going to take care of you. You know, if you're in your right mind, you can believe God to start your business at your retirement age. Retirement doesn't mean, mean you need to break down and get sick and die. You've still got your faculties. You're still bright. You still have, have gifts and talents. This, this could be the time for you to, to fulfill the dream that you've always had, but you couldn't because you were stuck in that other job. Those are the things I believe that God wants to do. But we put limitations on God. We say what we see. We say what we expect. God still wants to do these new things. If you're healthy, God wants to do some things in your life. And if you're not healthy, he wants to make you healthy so that you live long and strong. He said, I, I, with long life, I'll satisfy you. With long life, I'll satisfy you. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. That's we, what we speak to our eyes. That's what we speak to our organs. That's what we speak to our skin. The same spirit, the resurrection spirit, lives on the inside of you. So don't just go lay down and die somewhere. God still has things for you to do. Amen? Praise God. All right, let me, let me get to, my, um, <coughs> to um, the verses. I want to look, let's look at, um, I read some scriptures about, all right, let me, let me, man, I run out of time so fast. Let's look at Psalm 102 and verse 13. Psalm 102 and verse 13. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 102 and verse 13. It says, you will arise and have mercy on Zion. Zion is the church. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her, 
Yes, the set time has come. Let's read that again. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, Zion is the church. It's you. It's me. For the time to favor her, yes, the set time has come. Somebody say, my set time for the favor of God is already here. My time for God to favor me, to give me grace, to give me peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. That time is here. It's here now. We're not waiting for it. The set time to favor us is now. You know, the scripture says that Jesus grew in, fa grew in stature and he grew in favor with God and with man. He was the firstborn among many brethren. God has favored us. We are in the favor of God right now. Let's look at Luke chapter 4. We don't have to wait. Tell, somebody, tell the person next to you, you don't have to wait for the favor of God. The favor of God belongs to you now. Go ahead, tell somebody. Tell somebody. Say, the favor of God is on you now. Tell the other person, but I would never know it. I can't really tell, but it is, but we need to activate it by faith. Look, we're not getting nothing from God without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. God honors faith because faith honors God. That's why he's disappointed when we act in unbelief. We have chosen not to believe him, and that does not please him. But I'm telling you, the favor is on us now. It is the set time. It's the appointed time. Now, lots of times that word time, it means karyos, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. But it, means, it often means a, a window, a set window. But for us... For the church, that window is wide open, and it never shuts. We're sitting in the favor of God now. We have access to the favor of God. Stop looking pitiful. Stop looking sad. I don't care if you got one dollar in your pocket. The favor of God is on you now. The set time for God to favor you is now. Even though you're broke. Busted and disgusted, but the favor of God is available to you and to me. If we want it, if we want to activate it, if we want to declare it, if we want to agree with that scripture that says, yes, the set time to favor me is now. And it's not going away. God's not going to take it away. Man shouldn't be able to take it away from you. The only one that can cause the favor of God not to be activated in your life and my life is us. Because we don't know who we are. We think we're Kathy Johnson, Connie McLean. Instead of Connie, the daughter of the Most High God. Chris, the son of the Most High God. The favor of God is on my life. It might not look like it right now, but it is. That song said, even when it looks like God's not working, the favor of God is available to you and to me. And God can, God can touch your life. His favor can touch your life and make every pain Every disappointment, every failure, every loss looked like it never was. Looked like it never was. 
because he's a way maker. He makes a way out of no way. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God, that's who he is. But we got to say it. Then the angels will start moving. They'll start gathering things. You know, they're harvest angels. When we speak the word of God, they're waiting to hear us say who we are. In the name of Jesus, God, I claim my healing from this disease from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. In Jesus' name, I still continue that I'm going to have my first single home in the name of Jesus. That I'm going to get married after all these years. I don't care what it looks like. That's the kind of stuff we should be declaring and decreeing. The Bible says, he that findeth the wife finds a good thing. Call yourself a good thing and go ahead and be found. And stop being ugly and sad and mad and a pokey face and sad face. And, and instead of repelling every, everybody, you're going to attract somebody. But if you look pitiful, don't nobody want somebody that looks pitiful. Oh, pick me, pick me. <laughs> you got to do the right thing. You got to be the good thing. Amen? Look, you got to believe that it, it seems like there, uh, I don't want to get off on this, never mind. It seems like there's not many people to choose. But you know who's going to get the man or the woman? Is the one who's saying it the most. The one who's calling them in. You know who's going to get the new house? The one that's calling the new house in. You know the one that's going to get healed? Is the one calling in their healing and confessing that I received my, I believe I received my healing. Who's going to live? The one that says, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Who's going to live? The one that knows that they have a purpose and a promise from God. He gave us the promises so we would have something to believe in, so that we would have something to reach for and grasp for and confess for and pray for. Amen? Tell the person next to you, say, there's more to me than what you can see. Tell the other person, there's more to me than what you can see. And I'm talking about that spirit man on the inside of you. The one with no color. The one with no status except the one that God gives you. Doesn't even have, it doesn't even depend on what your brain or what your intellect is. Because God said in Deuteronomy 8, 18, he says, it's me that gives you the power to get wealth. Not your smarts, not your degrees, not how cute you are, not how savvy you are. But he said, I give you the power to get wealth. So you can be a dumb bunny and still prosper. That's nobody in here. I just said that. For effect didn't work too well <laughs> I didn't call you a dumb bunny I just said so we want to believe God amen so we have to release God's word in our life we have to declare it we have to decree what God says amen how many of you remember Shadrach Meshach and Abednego they got delivered they got what they needed because they made a declaration and a decree that God was going to save them. And guess what? God did save them. Whether we think it's a fairy tale or not, sometimes I think about, my God, they got thrown in a fire. What was that must have been like? I can't even imagine. I know you can't either. But it's in the Bible. It's in the B-I-B-L-E. So that means it happened. So if God can deliver three Hebrew boys, all four of them go in the fire without even smelling like smoke, surely God can do your little thing 
Surely God can start, help you start your little business, get your little car, get your new coat. Those things aren't even supernatural. <laughs> They're not even getting you out of a fire. The Bible says none of us have resisted unto blood like Jesus did. So, thank God we don't have to go through all those things. But God wants us to prosper. And he wants us to accomplish things now before this is over. So we as believers, we should be the voice of God's word in the earth. If the angels hearken to the voice of the word, we should be that voice. God already spoke the things. Now it's up to us to speak the things. Now he speaks, he gives us a word, but he's given us the word. And now we get the word in our mouths, in our hearts, and we activate it by speaking it. Amen? I just want to go through some things here. I have to um, praise the Lord. So God's got things in plan for you. Let's look at... Um, Luke 4, and then uh, in there, I went over. It says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus is, the King James Version says, um, it refers to the year that they would have called Jubilee, the year that everything was forgiven, the year that everybody got back everything that was taken from them. Every debt was wiped out. Some of y'all got some college payments that you need to believe God for, for debt cancellation. Jubilee was a day. Jesus is our jubilee. Jubilee back then was just a day, a certain day. But now Jesus is our debt cancellation. Whatever that may be, you can't even pay that college tuition. You can't pay those things that you have, that you ran right up. Now, you repent <laughs> if you did something wrong to get you in that situation, but you can, you can ask the Lord what to give to plant a seed so he can supernaturally cancel your debt. I've heard story after story where people have called up, the bank called them up, they can't find their loan or somebody paid off their loan. God wants to do those type of supernatural things in your life because your debt prevents you from doing anything that you want to do. Amen? So Jesus is our jubilee. Jesus is our debt cancellation. Jesus wants to see us get new businesses. Jesus wants us to get new homes and apartments and condos the favor of God and man. He wants us to get that as well. He wants us to have restored marriages. He wants to do that. He can do that right now. Maybe COVID-19 this season actually caused your marriage to break up. It's not too late. If you work with God, he can cause it to be restored because God loves marriage and he loves you. And he loves your spouse. Amen? So God wants us to have new jobs, new opportunities, new doors opened. A new image of yourself. New, new, new. Never seen, never seen. New means never seen, never experienced. You never had it. Tell somebody, God wants to do new things in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to read this one last thing. Why wait? Why wait? I read this scripture, Psalm 102, verse 13, where it says, for the time to favor her, the time to favor you, the time to favor me, the set time is come. You know, there was the incidents in Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5 where they were crossing the Jordan River. And then Joshua said to the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. Somebody say tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Joshua eleven six, do not be afraid because of them. For tomorrow, at this time, I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. My point is tomorrow. Why do you have to wait? I am believing God today that there's going to be some tomorrows, that God's going to work out some tomorrows in this room, in these lives, if you would just have faith and believe God. Why do we have to wait another 30 days? Why do we have to wait till after the election? Why do we have to wait until COVID-19 is on? No, we don't know. It's too taking too long. It's postponing my future. Tell the person next to you, say, stop postponing your future. God wants to do something tomorrow or as soon as tomorrow. Amen. How many of you need something done by tomorrow? Maybe you need something done by today. <clears throat> well, I would adjure you, I would beseech you, beg you to believe God. To believe God, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? You're a son, a daughter. God's a father. Your set time for him to favor you is now. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. And I pray in Jesus' name that the spirit of faith would rise up right now in your people, in this room and under the sound of my voice. Father, I pray for the spirit of faith for them to believe you, God, for whatever it is that they need, whatever it is that they desire, whatever they desire that has been postponed these weeks and years. Father, you know how to speed up time. There is no time with you. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if that's you, I want you to just lift your hand in faith right now. Lift your hands. If you believe in God for anything, if you've been discouraged, if you've put off, if you've put off the things that you were believing God for because of what's going on in the world, God doesn't care. He never has cared what is going on in the world as far as the promises and favor of his people. Because we don't live according to those standards. We don't live according to those restrictions. We live by the kingdom of God. So, Father, we lift our hands right now in faith. Say, Lord, I, I put myself out on a limb. And I believe you to cause my dream, my necessity, my passions, my goals to come to pass. You promised that if I would delight myself in you, that you would give me the desires of your heart, of my heart. Lord Jesus, I believe you now for the desires of my heart. In Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Say, I believe I receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise. Go ahead and shout through your mask. Hallelujah. Well, come on. Let's give God a big praise in the place today. What a word. Come on. Can we really thank God? Let's just give God a big round of applause real quick. The reality of that message is simply this. God wants to favor you because you're his favorite. And, and God loves you immensely. God says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor have I ever seen them begging for anything. And even right now, you're here. One of the things that we need to understand is that you are not limited. You're limitless. And your condition is not your conclusion. God's plan for your life will not and cannot be stopped. And you're here today. Or maybe you're watching online today. With every head bowed and every eye closed, please, you've never made a, dece a decision to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And saying, you know what, I want to receive Jesus Christ for the very first time. If that's you, and you're here in this sanctuary or you're watching online, and I do want to ask you to do something, especially if you're here, just go ahead and raise your hand. You're saying, you know what, as a simple act of me raising my hand signifies that I need prayer today. I want to get born again for the very first time. If that's you, just go ahead and raise your hand up. Or maybe you're here today and you'd like to rededicate your life to the Lord. Would you go ahead and raise your hand up? I'd love to have an opportunity to pray for you before we leave today. Or maybe you're here and you'd like to join Living Faith Christian Center. You're saying, you know what, I need to be a part of a great church family. If that's you, for either one of those calls, you want to join Living Faith Christian Center, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, or you want to give your life to the Lord for the very first time. If that's you and you're sitting in the sanctuary, would you go ahead and raise your hand up right now? I see that hand right there. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Anybody else in this sanctuary? Or maybe you're watching online. This is really important for you watching online today because even though you may be sitting around loved ones and you may be sitting around family members, you may not even feel loved. You may not even feel a part of that family, but God loves you, and God wants to make you a part of his family. Maybe you're watching online today. If you've never made a decision to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or you've never, or you need to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, or you need to join a good church family. If that's you, we're going to have a prayer in just a moment. I'm going to ask everyone to repeat that prayer, and if you repeat this prayer at the end of this prayer, you're going to be born again. You're going to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you guys help us to repeat this prayer? Say this prayer out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I also believe that you were raised from the dead to live forever so that I could live. Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my life. Come into my heart today. I receive you now by faith and I renounce the devil and all of his works. I say thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life today. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, come on, give God a praise in this place today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, if you're sitting in this sanctuary and you made a decision to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, our ushers, our team, they have something that they want to get into your hands. So would you please go ahead and raise your hand so our ushers can make sure that they get that to you at this time. For those of you that are watching online at home, if you would please do us a favor. This is really important. This is not a momentary decision. This is a lifetime decision. And so what we're going to ask you to do is to simply do this. There's a number that's going to pop up on your screen. It's 856 661-8110, extension 142. And we're asking you to please dial that number right now. We're going to have somebody get in touch with you. We need your name, your information. Just leave us a message and we will get in touch with you because we want to make sure that we partner with you and what God is about to do in this next season of your life. Amen. We love you. We thank you so much for watching. Come on, let's give God a big praise in the house today. 
Well, this is another opportunity for us to worship the Lord in our giving. And if you're excited about worshiping God with us, why don't you just put your hands together and thank God for the opportunity to worship in your giving. This is an opportunity for us to do two things, to sow into the kingdom of God and to sow into the works of this ministry. And here's what the Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. Now watch this. God is not mocked. In other words, God has a system that he put in place to prosper us. He said, listen, don't be mocked. You cannot bypass this system. Here it is. For whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. In other words, here's what God is telling us. You have the ability to change your world by changing your seed. Seed is always the opportunity for more. And whenever you sow a seed, you don't get back a seed. You get back a seed with more seeds in it. So as we're sowing, as we're giving, we're going to believe God that whatever we sow, we're going to reap back. If you need a pink tithe and offering envelope, you're sitting in this sanctuary, go ahead and raise your hand and our ushers will go ahead and serve you at this time. As a matter of fact, I believe we have a number of ways that you can give. Video department, would you go ahead and roll that at this time? Here at Living Faith, we have made giving easy by using electronic options as much as possible. You can text to give by texting LFCCNJ to 77977. You can give once or set up as a recurring gift. Just enter in your details, confirm your gift, and you're done. You can give through our new LFCCNJ Church app. This method will look similar to text to give The iOS version of the app can be downloaded at the App Store, or you can get the Android version on Google Play. You can also give online at lfccnj.com slash giving. If these options are not possible, you can obtain a pink envelope and deposit it as you leave. We thank you again for joining us today. God bless you. And we thank you for giving and for worshiping with us this time. Remember, your worship is never wasted when you sow into the kingdom of God. And just as you heard on the video, if you do have one of those pink tithe and offering envelopes, then you can deposit it in one of the, bo the boxes uh, in the back of the sanctuary as you leave. Again, if you like to give to our Thanksgiving food drive, then you can use the outreach portion of your envelope to put a certain amount. We're asking that if you'd like to do that, you can simply sow $30. $30 will help us to feed a family. Right, So if you'd like to be a part of that and you'd like to help us. I, I believe last week or a couple of weeks ago, we served 90 families. Can we thank God for serving 90 families? Isn't that awesome? And so as you're giving, as you're sowing, as you're using PayPal, hey, listen, not PayPal, what is it? Uh, push pay. <laughs> the direction of your life is changed by the declaration of your lips. So, so as you're giving, say something. You have to say something to get something. And as we heard from our pastor, we're believing for something. How many of you believe it for something? Do they put your hands together if you're believing for something? Also, let's not forget that this is pastors. We celebrated Pastor's Appreciation Day a couple of weeks ago. But how many know that we can make every day Pastor's Appreciation? I do want to remind you that if you have any expressions of love, then please do not forget to sow or to give those expressions of love to her. Come on, let's thank God for the word that we heard. And let's thank God for Pastor Connie as she comes to close us out. Come on, let's thank God, guys. Let's put our hands together and thank God. Thank you, Pastor Roosevelt. All right, I just have a few things, a couple things. Number one, we, we need volunteers for two upcoming events. We have our Thanksgiving food drive coming up on November 20, or Saturday, November 21st, our Thanksgiving food drive, which we have every year. In addition to that, uh, we need volunteers for an Acts of Kindness Day that we're having on November 14th. We're going to be giving out some items for um, essentials and for cold weather. So we're, we, we're, we're 
going to put some packets together. And so we need volunteers to help us put those things together prior to those days, as well as the event day itself. So we need volunteers for Acts of Kindness Day on November 14th, which is a Saturday, as well as a Thanksgiving food drive on November 21st. All right? We, we want to help people, and so that's what we're going to do. The Acts of Kindness is for Pensalkin, our Pensalkin area. All right? Uh, also, members can find the links to sign up on the website under the Get Involved tab. So on the website, LFCC NJ website, you can find the Get Involved tab and sign up there, okay? You can also sign up on our church app. Amen. We have a church app. Isn't that nice? We have a church app. You can download it to your phone or your iPad, and you can go under Connect and sign up to volunteer for that. So we, I'd really appreciate that so we can uh, make that day go quicker too, amen, or make the process go quicker. All right, also, if you are an LFCC member, if you're an LFCC member and you are experiencing difficulties um, uh, during these times, please call the church and um, you can ask you can ask for extension 142. If you're an LFCC member and you need some type of help, then please call the church and let us know about it, okay? It'd be a, a poor church to take care of Pensauk and, and not take care of you. So don't, don't be embarrassed. Look, hey, this is not permanent. If you're going through a hard time, don't, don't be, you know, just, just call, okay? All right, y'all are so quiet. All righty, I think that's it. Thanks again for your cards and your gifts. I appreciate it so much. What? Men's for, oh, okay. Maybe you should come up and tell us about that. I'll, I'll stand over here. Amen. Real quick, we're going to have our first men's fellowship of the year, November 7th. Can we give God praise for that? <laughs> I know it's a little late. But we're going to be ushering in the theme for next year, and it's going to be an online service only. You'll find it on YouTube and Facebook Live and all of those different social media platforms. But an important uh, item that we're going to talk about next year, the theme for next year is stronger. We're going to be building stronger men, mm -hmm. stronger family. Amen. Stronger church. Stronger men make strong. And ultimately yep. a stronger nation. And I want to challenge all of the men at 10 o'clock on November the 7th, 10 a.m., to tune in on your YouTube channel and let's make this nation stronger for the kingdom of God. Come on, can we put our hands together real quick, guys? Amen. Also, keep praying. Keep praying our Facebook prayer. Remember, keep praying. The Lord said it's working. And he is healing our nation. Even though when it looks like he's not moving, he is. So just keep praying that Facebook prayer. Pray for our nation. Pray for our president. Pray for our, our whatever, all the things that are going on and um, so that God can heal our land. Look, we live here. And when we want to continue living here. I don't want to move to another nation. <laughs> I like America. Amen. So I'm praying for our nation. Amen. Well, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. And Father, I declare, because you've already spoken it, so we declare and decree that we are blessed, happy, fortunate, and power to prosper, and to be envied, because you've already declared it. So somebody agree with God and say, I am blessed. All right. Thank you for tuning in to Living Faith Online with Pastor Connie McLean. Please join us again next time. God bless you.